All right, all right, family Black Power. We in the house. Y'all know what time it is. It's the Truth Hour with King Seti. Sit back and get your ass ready because, God damn it, it's going to get heavy. It's going to get heavy. You know, today we're going to be dealing with one of the most powerful uh, empress queens of all time, our most nefertari, matriarch of the 18th dynasty. We're about to get that work in. Y'all know what time it is, kingseti.com, online marketplace, official general SETI DVDs, t-shirts, hoodies, African and comedic jewelry, holistic tonics and remedies, art and home decor. You understand, for the family that's trying to change, transform their African home into the African temple. Get on over there today. You see, ring the alarm. Y'all know what time it is. Dropping bombs on GeneralSETI.com. SETI University. The complete General SETI website. Over 800 videos and lectures. Too raw for you, too. The Making of the White Man. The Black Woman is God series. Uh, when, when Egypt ruled the earth. All religions. Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism. This ism, that ism, ancient Egypt, Ethiopia, India, gas, global African supremacy. We got all you need over there guaranteed to get you together. GeneralSETI.com, SETI University. And also my Patreon, you know, exclusive live streams, just rocking the house. We just dropped another powerful one just the other day. You know, it couldn't go up on YouTube because it was too powerful. Too powerful. Let me drop it in there. How Zeus our mom became, became the comedic double, uh, uh, the uncut version. You got to be strong for that. You see? But if you want it, you know, you you want to get that the, the gems and jewels, uh, you know, General SETI exclusive live stream, get over to my Patreon. All the links are down in the video description. Hit those, hit those links and get on. on I don't, know, I don't know why the uh, internet is, I don't know, I might be too far away from the box. Might be too far away from the box. Let me open the door up and hopefully that the goddamn frequencies will get to me. Okay, make sure that you uh, subscribe to all my YouTube pages, General SETI, Sarasun SETI, and King SETI. Rock that notification bell. Get a video, a, a thumbs up, like it because you love it, and share it with your family. They need this wisdom and knowledge too, you see? And so what we dealing with today? We dealing with our most nefertari uh, matriarch of the greatest bloodline in human history. The greatest bloodline in human history. So when you talk about all the, <laughs> you talk about all the kings and queens, that come from this, this black woman, and you can see she's a black woman. There's no doubt about it. She comes straight up out of Nubia. You know, and they, they find all type of lies and, you know, and they say that this was just, you know, a, a, a peculiar rendition, that she was much lighter than that. You hear all type of lies. They can't deal with the fact that she was straight up out of Nubia, straight up out of Wasset, and that she was the... uh the head of the bloodline. Of the very great too. But the 18th dynasty was so profound because you've seen the kings and the queens, you know, take to such height that, you know, it just, you know, it, it, it stands out all across the planet. You know, it stands out all across all the planet. Now, so when you talk about uh, the beginning of the 18th dynasty, you're talking about Amos and Amos Nefertari. You see, and you know, uh, they were the ones that brought uh, uh, redemption and unity and freedom to, to, to Kenneth. You know, they were the ones that, you know, that those who had 
betrayed Egypt and had conquered upon our land. You know, they brought, you know, they brought death and destruction to those, those foreigners and have brought death and destruction to those who had, you know, come upon our land to bring misery to our people. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, they were called the great liberators. You know, when you talk about Amos, he was called the liberator. And so uh, Amos Nefertari's father, second rate Tayo, died in battle, fighting to free Egypt from uh, uh, colonial rule, you see? And so, you know, when we look at, let's look at the dynasties. Let's look at the uh, 18th dynasty. Okay, and so you see Amos, you see, now they got the mask in here, but when you talk about the first, uh, Amos the first, you talking about how the uh, husband of Amos ne uh, Nefertari ruled around 17, uh, 1576, 1551, uh, 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 and so you talking about, you look at the greats that come down through the uh the uh the matriarchy of our most nefertari and so you're talking about all the topmost now the topmost is were responsible for the most part especially topmost is the third for uh you know conquering you know bringing so many uh uh other nations into the rule of ancient Egypt. so under uh topmost is the third Egypt's borders have reached its greatest extent, you know, under Tutmosis III. And so when you're talking about Tutmosis III, you're talking about basically, I believe, the, the great-great-grandson of Amos Nefertari. Let me get it down here. You're talking about the, uh, the great-great-grandson of Amos Nefertari. And so you see, and she, you know, one of the most, the most, and, and, and I say T, you know, and, and almost Nefertari, but see, almost Nefertari and almost, they were in the trenches. I ain't saying she was, you know, but they were in the, the fight to free each. You see, she wasn't personally out there, but at the time of her husband, he was out there trying to free Egypt from the invaders. You see, so she didn't get the opportunity to enjoy the great extent of the empire like Queen T or Hatshepsut. You see what I'm saying? And so that, you know, but yet and still her name was uh, uh, called on or you see inscribed on more artifacts than any other individual in ancient history. You see, in ancient Egypt. And so you see how even generations and generations and generations after almost Nefertari, how they venerated her, you know, how they venerated her as a, as a, you know, a priestess, as a goddess, you know, as a prophetess, you know, one that they would call on. And so you would see many uh, inscriptions with Pharaoh's generations long after. she had let me see to you know to give the impression that the great god is walked with that particular pharaoh so you know she was very powerful even in her death even in her death she was called upon and so you can see many this is another one to the left showing her melanin rich black goddess of the 18th dynasty you see every you know and they and they say well you know this was a later rendition of our most never tired that she, you know, she was just the same color. And that's not true. They they lie just like they lie about a uh, men to hotel who was also depicted black. And then, you know, they try to say, okay, this was they painted him black because he was dead until we saw his daughter was also black as he was. And then that destroyed that lie. And so they anytime they see any form of blackness. In ancient Egypt, they're going to find a way to, you know,
to explain it a, it away. You see, and so you know when you get so this this is the matriarch of the greatest uh, dynasty in human history. You see, and so here and here's other renditions of the, the great. And so here she is with uh, a husband. I'm uh, I'm most the first the liberal. You know, and there are other, uh, there are other uh, depictions which do show her as, you know, painted like other Egyptians. But nevertheless, that's, uh, you know, you have to, you have to look at the ones that, you know, the, you know, the most in what was the, uh, what color did most of the statue that depicted this sister, and, and what color was it, and it was black. You see. And here again, we're just continuing to show different renditions of, and this was her father, uh, second Ray, uh, this is her father, second Ray Tayo. And you can see where he had, uh, you know, had taken some blows to the head. You know, he died in battle. You know what I'm saying? So in honor of her father, she continue on, continued on with liberation of philosophy and ideology. And her husband carried on the fight to free Egypt from the foreigners and from the invaders. And so again, this showing, uh, you know, this is almost her husband to the side, you see, showing this African uh, uh, power couple that would rise up and, and, and take, you know, the, uh, the fight to the heart of the enemy. And, and run his ass clear out the land. And so we need this type of energy today. You know, we, you know, we, we need, I see, I see, I see the internet going out crazy today. It's been raining out there. So we got to, you know, bear with me family. You know, and so you see that there's many attacks going on in the community today, and it's causing for the black man to rise up and reclaim his historical greatness and reclaim the divine responsibility that was bestowed upon him by the cosmos, and he didn't vacate it, and that has caused great disdain and despair on the community. And so the only way that the change and redemption can take place is that the black man reclaim his divine uh, 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 responsibility as the caretaker and custodian of his community, of his nation, of his family, and bring redemption. That is the only way that it could happen. It can't happen no other way. And so, you know, we when we look at the energy that comes from this power couple, we got to honor that and we got to, you know, and we got to say, you know, how can we take the energy of our ancestors and transport it into the community as a, a spiritual uh, generator that can get our people up to making moves? You understand what I'm saying? Just like our most Nefertari and our most deferred. You understand? Get these goddamn Arabs and all these other motherfuckers out your goddamn community. And so when you see here, uh, Men too, hotel was also a Waseti because our most Nefertari, I believe, was born in Waset. You see, which was a, a, a very powerful city in Nubia before it was uh, a city of Egypt. And so, you see, him, uh, uh, Men too, hotel was also depicted black. And so, well, let me see if I got his daughter in there, she might pop up. And so, when you look at now, this is clear, so you can see the bloodline. When you look now, Amos Nefertari was the great-great-grandmother of Hatshepsut. Now, Hatshepsut, very well, you know, you know, she's arguably, along with uh, Queen T, the most powerful woman of the, uh, of, of the ancient world. You know what I'm saying? Because of the fact that she ruled at a time when Egypt, when Egypt was in its height. You know what I'm saying? So she had more resources. She had, you know, more soldiers. She had more in the, the educational, the university was at its height. 
And so she, had, you know, everything was in its height during these times. And so she had her hand on the uh, the reins of power. And so she, you know, she very well could be considered the greatest uh, uh, female ruler of the ancient world. You know, and, and you know, arguably so. You know, nobody, no other, you know, queens of any other land could argue that they had as much resource, much power, and that their hand could stretch across, you know, the ancient world, and motherfuckers would bow down and bear witness to her power. You see what I'm saying? And so a lot of times we don't understand that these are not just queens, but they're empresses. And it's not, it's, you know, especially Hashepthu. Our most Nefertari at that time, the empire was starting, you know, they was pushing them out. You know what I'm saying? But the Tutmosis, especially Tutmosis III, was the one that went into Asia. You know, they chased them out of Africa. But Tutmosis went into Asia and followed their ass. And wherever they tried to hide, he crushed their ass. And so, you know, uh, Tutmosis III never lost a, a battle. And many consider him to be the greatest military strategician of the ancient world. You understand? For the fact that he never lost a battle. Now, this is Tutmosis III. And he's also depicted in many instances as being black. You see, as being black. And so this is uh, her great-great-grandson, Tutmosis III, the greatest conqueror. Now, I got his, I got some, uh, let me see where the, uh, oh, the maps right here. Now, they try to show you, now, this was the, uh, the uh, extent of, you know, his power, you know, uh, Tutmosis III conquering Nubia conquering today what is called Israel up into Syria. Many believe that he came on around and took Mesopotamia too. You see, he took Mesopotamia too. And so, this, you know, and, and, and a lot of times they shrink the map on us because they don't want to show that our hand even extended into Europe, even extended into Asia as far as India and China. You see, as far as India and China. And so when, you, when you're looking at, you know, the greatness of this dynasty and these queens that come upon rulership, they have, it were empresses and that the pharaohs, were, uh, they were pharaohs, but they was also emperors. You see what I'm saying? And they don't state that. You see what I'm saying? They do not state that because they don't want you to understand the, the magnitude of, and greatness of our rulers at this time. And so you see also the Tutmosis Tutmose III, Amenhotep III. You see what I'm saying? Now, you, you right there, you're talking about the three greatest rulers in all of human history. You see what I'm saying? And very, you know, and they, they in the top 10. They ain't, they ain't down, you know, we ain't talking, but they in the top 10. You see, Hashepsu, Tutmosis III, Amenhotep III. Now, Akhenaten was, you know, he was crazy now, but that was still a, a, a great, well, it would have been, let me see, a son, a grandson, great grandson, great grandson, great. A grandson, great grandson, great, great grandson, great, 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 three, four, five, six. So Akhenaten would have been her great grandson to the sixth gener generation. You see what I'm saying? So that was his great great grandmother to the sixth, you know, uh, to the sixth generation. And and I and uh to to Tycomen or King Tut would have been her great uh great grandson to the seventh generation. So they all go back to our most nephew. You see what I'm saying? And so let me come back down to show you know that uh Tut Moses and so he he was foremost in bringing the empire to the greatest uh extent that it ever 
was in, in, in the history of ancient Egypt. You see what I'm saying? And this is accredited because the, the liberation philosophy and ideology that she passed down through the bloodline, he took up the mantle in the time of his rule. He ruled right after Hatshepsut. You see what I'm saying? And that, that probably was one of the uh, most powerful back-to-back -back rules in the, hi uh, in the history of humanity. There's no doubt about that. You know, they had these kind of, and the, and the architectures that they left. Now, Tutmosis III had added more, you know, uh, uh, temples in, in and the, the great temple at Karnak, you know, he was very profound in constructing a lot of, when we talk about Karnak, which was the greatest temple in all of Egypt. And so he added more to the temple than any one Pharaoh. Do you see what I'm saying? And so that's to his credit also. And so this is, again, Amenhotep III. And so it's clear, you know, that this is you know, a brother. He come almost 200 years. He come almost 200 years after his his uh after his great grandmother to if I believe was the sixth generation. You know, six generations back. You know, and so you know the legacy and for the 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 bloodline to carry on for so long and continuing to produce. Everybody in the 18th dynasty was, you had some that were more profound than others, but all of them had a lasting legacy, you know, that they handed the baton to the next pharaoh, to the next queen, and that they really did, you know, they were already, you know, when they handed the baton, there were so many accomplishments that they were, they were inheriting that, you know, they could, you know, the, the add further accomplishments and it's just astounding what this dynasty, you know, you know, produced. It's astounding. And so again, you see, you know, after I'm, mean, you see uh, Akhenaten, and so you clearly see an uh, African dynasty. It's not no uh, European or no Asian. This is an African dynasty. Every one of those, you know, uh, empresses and, and pharaohs, queens and pharaohs. That we that are depicted in the 18th dynasty is clearly African, and so are the others. But because the 18th, again, the 18th dynasty was so profound because it was Egypt in its height, many of the pharaohs and uh, empresses were highly depicted. You see a lot of statues earlier than that, you know, in Egypt, they didn't have you know the prowess in carving the statues. For all, you know, many times you have to look, you know, it's, it's statues, but, you know, you know, in ancient, in, in the 18th dynasty, it's just overload. You know what I'm saying? Each, each Pharaoh, each empress got, you know, tons of statues and so on and so forth. You see? And so, uh, Akhenaten, crazy as hell, out there in the damn desert worshiping flowers and shit, but that was... Her, her great grandson to the seventh generation. You know, it was, a, you know, and so they all, you know, all these great pharaohs traced their lineage back to ancient Nubia. And back to ancient Nubia, you see. And Akhenaten in his own right, even though he was most definitely out of line by closing down a lot of the uh, ancient temples ancient temples and, and trying, you know, because he felt like, you know, a lot of the priesthoods, such as the priesthood of Amun, was even stronger than the, in, than the throne. And so he was trying to curb a lot of their power by, you know, closing down the temple, diminishing uh, the influence of the uh, temple or, or, or the, uh, the uh, craft of Amun. You know, and you know, and he he lost out. He lost out. He lost out when he did that. You know, he 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 you know he had his hand on uh 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 power. You know, for a minute, but it wasn't long. It wasn't long that they you know they did away with Akhenaten. A lot of people say they don't know what happened to Akhenaten, but 
it, as soon as he, you know, his reign was over, the the uh the priesthood of Amen Ra was back in control. So they they literally, you know, they got him on up out of there. But to you know, to his credit, he's still a figure in history that's world renowned. A lot of people look at Akhenaten as the first monotheist, which is not true. There was always a monotheism in Egypt long before Akhenaten. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a polytheistic mono uh, mono uh, monotheism. You see what I'm saying? That means you got a, a one God in many districts all over Egypt, but then you know as as one nation, all the gods will be venerated, will be highly respected. And so you and you have local gods, but you have the one national god. And so he's a collection of all the deities, you know. So, you know, there was always a monotheism in ancient Egypt. And don't and let's make it clear. So my, uh, Akhenaten wasn't, you know, the first monotheist. He's probably the most famous to stand out in hi history. But when you do your research and you get off into, you know, the uh, in uh, ancient Egypt and Africa in depth, you're going to see that there was always a monotheism in Africa. You see, and so you see here, uh, uh, Tutankhamun and Akhenaten, and you know they were first. I, you know, the, you know they was under the uh, bloodline, you know, the rulership of Akhenaten. So many of their names, it was Tut Akhenaten and Akhenaten Aten. You know, and but then, you know, so, as soon as uh, Akhenaten was out the way, you know, they tried, you know, Amen was back on the scene. You see what I'm saying? And so these were the great grandchildren of, of almost not never tired to, to the eighth generation. To the eighth generation. And so when we talk about King Tut, you know what I'm saying? He was the most, you know, you know, you know, when as far as tombs being recovered, his tomb was the greatest tomb to be recovered intact, intact, you know, with all the contents still in, in inside the tomb. And so, you know, this 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 was the greatest find in the ancient world. Well, you know, you know, to have these type of treasures, you know what I'm saying, never to have been touched before. And you get the whole cache, you get the whole tomb, you know, and, and so, you know, and so this was her great grands, uh great grandson to the eighth generation. So with Tut, Akhenaten, uh Hatshepsut, Aminotep the third, Tut Moses uh uh the third Hashem Sue, you are clearly talking about the greatest collection, the greatest dynasty uh, uh, in a uh, bloodline in human history that come up out of an earlier bloodline also. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was clear that they were up out of Nubia. They were up out of Nubia. And, if, and we can look, we can get into a, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, other lectures that can go into it more profound. Now you can see right here this Cro Magnum Neanderthal then took the headdress of the great uh matriarch Amos Nefertari. Now when you talk about the hairdress of 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 Mu, you see the vulture headdress. You see uh Amos Nefertari is the is, is the god, the queen that so profoundly brought the worship of goddess Mu, you know, because in the 18th dynasty, Amen, the great god Amen, the great goddess Mu were the chief deities, the chief god and goddess. You see what I'm saying? So you see the vulture god, a uh, vulture headdress of uh, the great empress Amos Nefertari. And then you see this Cro Magnum Neanderthal. That then stole our legacy, knowing goddamn well she, if she was in Kemet at any time, 
you understand what I'm saying, uh, in the 100 degree weather, that she would not be like goddamn burnt toast some goddamn well. You understand what I'm saying? Unable to to move because the goddamn muscles was locked, would lock up on her ass from the heat. You see, I seen them in, 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 you know, with my own eyes and knowing that that's, they're not indigenous to Africa. They're not indigenous to Kemet. And there's no way you're going to think you're going to claim the legacy of Kemet. And you can't even walk around. You can't even stand in the goddamn sun, let alone to be doing anything as far as constructing uh, pyramids and so on and so forth. You can't even just stand in Kemet, let alone doing labor. And, you know, and, and hard labor. And so we see right here, this is a theft of African history and that we got to reclaim our history. You can see even in the Bible, this is a, a, a pictorial Bible. Now they tried to make the, uh, the uh, emperor, uh, no, that's Pharaoh's sister, who supposedly found Moses in the Nile River. Now she damn dark and he damn white. What kind of shit is that? And, and, and he supposed to be passing off as her child. You see what I'm saying? There's no way that that's going to happen. And how in the hell are you going to be in Egypt and you what? God damn it, even the, even the Cro-Magnum Neanderthals have some form of some damn, you know, coloration on them. I mean, it ain't going to be much, but God damn it, at least they be red. You see? And so, now, this is very profound when I bring this. You know, because this is supposed to be one of the Venuses uh, that they, you know, you had your Venus worship in, in uh, prehistoric uh, uh, so-called Europe, which was nothing but the Grimaldi African who had the, the word, the black, you know, the worship of the black mother, the holy mother in Europe. And they would place these Venus dials down into the grave. And so you see clearly that this is was this Venus to the left was found in France and it's it, it, it's been carbon dated between thirty to fifteen thousand BC. And you could clearly see the headdress is the headdress that uh, from uh, 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 African women that ruled or lived in Egypt. Now, how is it possible that they got the same? hairstyle you see they got the same hairstyle but the one in the left supposed to be 30 to fifteen thousand bc you see and so they show you that when they start talking about how old africa is that they're lying that they didn't cut much uh date you know much chronology off of africa so that it would fit comfortably into uh the, the, the Eurocentric world view, you see? And so that, that's very profound to see that in, 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 in that the black woman was God. That's very clear because when you, how do we know this? Because when you go back to the earliest uh, uh, burials, they was in the fetal position all over uh, Africa, all over Europe, all over Asia. And so when you put in the fetal position, you're taking the position as if you are in the stomach of your mother. You see, you're, 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 you're uh, a, a, a fetus. You see what I'm saying? Inside the stomach of your mother, you, you've been placed down into the, the womb of Mother Earth to be reborn into the afterlife. You see what I'm saying? To be reborn into the afterlife. So the, that, that is proof positive that the earliest worship was the worship of the holy black mother, you see? And so again, showing you a depiction of Amos Nefertari, and you can see right here the Nubian sister, who is a depiction of Amos Nefertari today, uh, a depiction. Now that one, I believe, might be Queen T, you see? And this is a depiction of... Uh, our hotel, the first. This is uh, the mother of almost Nefertari. This is an actual sarcophagus of our hotel. You see who 
was the wife of second Ray Tayo, the father of Amos, who died in battle for trying to free Egypt from the tyranny of the foreign invaders. You see? And so, kick back in. You see almost Nefertari, you see almost, and then you see uh, Amenhotep III and Queen T. You see them power couples. See, that's how you do it. You know what I'm saying? This is how we get back to our greatness. You know what I'm saying? When we side by side with our queen, with our king, and we in unison, and we in equality of rulership, and we, you know, and, and, and uh, the necessary uh, functions of, of the man is being fulfilled, you understand, as it was divinely ordained upon him to fulfill those functions. You see what I'm saying? We are the enforcers of my act, and we have not been enforcing no damn my act. We've been enforcing some bullshit. And that's why the community is in the state of chaos that is in today. You understand what I'm saying? Because we have vacated a, a, a unrelenting and raw African masculinity that requires one to crack skulls when they disrespect the, the family, the nation, the community, and, 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 and do it. You understand? With divine energy, you know, to un and understand that it is, it is a divine cause that we we take to defense of our community, that we should not fall back in, in, in with lack of courage. You know, understand that we could be victorious. You know, and that's what, you know, that's what niggas do. They fall back. Soon as you bring up, you know what I'm saying, defending the community, niggas will tap. Soon as you say something, the niggas automatically tap. But goddammit, let something go down with a brother, and goddammit, you're going to pull out all the weaponry. You're going to pull out all the instruments of warfare to kill your own brother or kill your own family. You understand? We got to quit running from that fact. You know what I'm saying? When we get back that unrelenting, raw African masculinity, which is the sun, solar energy of the cosmos, it'll bring everything back into order. If you if you try to do it any other kind of way, it will not happen. So we, what we got to do is as, as African men, we must take accountability for ourselves. What we are doing wrong that is causing the, cha the chaos to reign in the community, make the correction within the black man, and I guarantee you all other things will fall into order. You see what I'm saying? As we look back in the past, and I say this like I said on the last uh, video in respect to Queen T. A lot of times when we say the black woman is God, you know, and because we got a lot of Fruit Loop niggas out there, you know, that put on house shoes and this, that, and the third. We have to understand when the when the black woman was our God, the black man was in the height of his masculinity. You see what I'm saying? He wasn't at, he wasn't on his knees begging a man to stop killing him. He wasn't running around with the foreigners' religion. You know, then and got on all the foreigners, you know, outfits and shit, and and thinking he's sweet and thinking the nigga use a use a clown. You understand what I'm saying? Use a goddamn clown. And so today, to we have to go back when we were actually rulers of the planet, and we have to look at the blueprint that was laid down then. And you know, and, and I and I bring up key symbols that clearly are still, uh, 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 you know, uh, instruments of measurement on wealth and health in the community. And, and the greatest symbol of all of ancient Egypt was the holy mother and child. You see, and because when you look at the mother and the child, that's, that right there alone will gauge, is the greatest gauge of prosperity, wealth, and, and health in the nation. You see what I'm saying? And so you, you you don't have to look no further than that. And so this is and when so as a king, he understood 
that as long as his woman and his children were defended, protected, and provided for, that his nation would be strong and prosperous. And long as he did that, the queen was honored to, you understand what I'm saying, to support the king in all his endeavors, to support him spiritually, mentally, and physically. And so if niggas have seen that, you know, they no longer in, in, in unison with their woman is because they fell out of their divine responsibility. They didn't fell out of the, the raw, unrelenting African masculinity that is needed to rule. Don't let nobody tell you, you know, that, you know, you're going too far. You never go too far. You know what I'm saying? You do what is in the, the ways of my eye. You're not a savage, but you have a raw, unrelenting energy that is a, has the ability to crush all adversaries. When you dim that energy, you, you lack the necessary tools to crush your, your adversary. And so you now today, you making all the excuses on, you know, why the community is in the predicament it's in. And you blame them for the chaos. You blame them. And, and that don't mean that, you know, everybody else is not, you know, you know, res, you know, is responsible for following code. But when the, the man who is the, the orbit, he's the son and you out of order, you already know. You can't demand nobody else be getting orbit until your ass is in order. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to take the order first and foremost, and that's that's just responsible, brother. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna end on this because I, I I ended on the last video. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's very necessary that we talk about this. Now, you know the uh, the Bible. We understand the Bible. You know, got a lot of lies in it, but it got something in there that could be used to our advantage if we choose to use. And so the one uh, the one verse that we speak about, and I'm continuing to bring it up because it has an order that's there that can clarify a lot of why we are in the predicament that we in. Now, this, uh, this is Matthew 12, 29, and it says, listen, or else how can one enter a strong man's house, listen, or else how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. So if you turn around, nigga, and your house has been spoiled, in order for that to happen, you got the, 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 the uh, he, one would have to bind the strong man. You can't come in. And so what am I saying? If you turn around and you say you had eyes with your, your woman, you had eyes with your children, the economics is, 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 is deplorable. There's killing all through the community. You, you got savagery. The children is out of order. And so your house is in spoil. How could that happen? with a strong man at the helm. So what has happened, nigga, that this man has binded your brain. First and foremost, he has binded your thinking. He has binded your spirit. He's binded your connection to your ancestors. He's binded that. And in doing that, then he can spoil your house. So if you turn around and you look at the house and, and the house is spoiled, you don't say, well, God damn it, what the fuck? You, 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 and get on them. And you, and, and the reason why it's that way is because you've been binding. You have to unbind your fucking mind, nigga. You have to unbind your spirit, that raw, unre if you got it. Some of you niggas can't unbind shit because it ain't there. It ain't there. You see what I'm saying? And so you have to unbind your spirit, unbind your mind from the, and take your place in the universe. Take your place as the divinely appointed custodian and caretaker of the planet. When you do that, 
Don't let nobody talk you out of it either. Don't let nobody give you no other fucking position. This is what you must accept what is divinely ordained for you first and foremost. You can't take the ideology of men because men are fickle. You cannot look at me. They they will, you know, they're fickle. They will always, men decide on, you know, in favor of what's going to keep their ass in power. They don't side in, in favor of nature and natural law. So you have to always uh, uh, apply na natural and cos cosmic law as the premier understanding of how you functioning on this planet. Any other way, you're going to have chaos. You see what I'm saying? The fucking earth is, the soil has been poisoned. The water has been poisoned. You know why? Because fickle-minded Cro-Magnum and, 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 and his nigga coon uh, 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 mutants and shit right along with him, you understand what I'm saying, have defiled the planet to the demise of natural order for the sake of their power. For the sake of them being able to rule and have power over the planet. So man ain't going to get, and so if he, if he give you some uh, coal, it's only to keep your ass in order so that he can stay in power. It's not going to, uh, uh, it's not going to provide for you divinely appointed responsibilities given to you by nature. And so you got there first and foremost. And when you do that, when you accept your responsibility and you you claim your responsibility and you perform your due diligence, your duty and your due diligence and bring the planet back into the rule of my eye. When you do that, all other things will fall in order. Now, I'm going to state this and I'm going to state this again to my brothers out there so that they would understand this. You see, and I, and I, and I keep because I want you to get it in your mind. You know what I'm saying? Anything in nature, the species, whatever species it is, it is attracted to the mass, the alpha male. It's attracted. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, any, any you know, and, and when you see the, anything, in, and I, I bring, I brought up the lion. I can bring up. As a zoo type, I don't know why we I'm having all this, you know, in the air. As a zoo type, you see what I'm saying? As a zoo type, he performs his duty greater than most. You understand what I'm saying? Because he he's in charge of a pride. He's in charge of a nation. He's in charge of a community. You see what I'm saying? And he, he does not allow anything to come into his community. You see what I'm saying? He fights to the death. He protects his, his cubs. He protects uh, uh, the lioness uh, of his pride. That's what he do. And he don't, and, and there's no, un and so you can't, you know, it, it's many times where the lionesses, they be out there fighting. But they they can't they up against some shit that they can't beat. You know what I'm saying? And it requires the lion. And I mean, it could be a goddamn 30, 40 hyenas. And they done ran the lionesses up in the tree. But that one fucking alpha male lion will come and crack they ass. He'll come and hit. And the thing about it, he don't play no fucking game. He goes straight to the head. Of that clan of hyenas, and he break that motherfucker back. You know what? Under under uh under that type of leadership, they they support him, and when he go to fight, you know what I'm saying? They be right there. You understand? Backing him up. You see what I'm saying? And so I don't I don't promote the sisters to be physically fighting. Niggas need to get their bitch ass up and fight. The thing that the sisters should do is support spiritually and, and mentally and in all other kind of ways. 
You understand what I'm saying? But let these bitch ass niggas get up off their ass and get out there and fight this war. And so in honor of the great uh, matriarch, Almost Nefertari, and the great patriarch, uh, uh, Almos, and the legacy of these power couples that come down, they come down, come down through the lineage of Almost Nefertari, uh, possibly, and I state that, spiritually, the greatest queen that ever ruled. More, um, um, one of the most renowned queens in all of human history. The most, re, the most talked about individual in all of ancient Egypt. She was, her name was scribed on more stone, more papyruses than any individual in all of ancient Egypt history. And so that says a lot that even after her death, she was looked at as a prophetess. She was looked at as a goddess. Uh, you know, and so they prayed to her and they prayed to Queen T. And this just show you that this, and I'm showing you the black man at his height. At his height. When the black man was at his height in masculinity, in power, in rulership, his woman was his God. <laughs> okay, his woman was his God. So you better, you know, you better look at. Don't let them niggas play you. Don't let them niggas play you. Say, oh, that's some them niggas. Is, you know, no nigga, them niggas is uh, what they call it. You know, they following behind the woman and this, that, and the third. No, it's a divine cosmic science to that. That's beyond them niggas thinking. We was in power. We was ruling. We had empires. Now these niggas swear they got the answer, yet they begging for the, the crow magnum to stop killing their ass. They have no power whatsoever. So when you really look at it, you better break that, that equation down and pull it apart, and it'll prove true what I'm saying. It'll prove true. So when you pull ancient Egypt apart and you break down the the, the different components of what made Egypt, and you see how we rule for thousands and thousands of years. Once you know how you did it once, you know how you can do it again. And what's so very profound about how we did it in Africa, in the Nile Valley, it was a natural order. And because it's a natural order and it's a cosmic order, you got the cosmos on your side. You got the cosmos. Only when you step out of cosmic order, your ass is destined to fall. I want to thank y'all for being here today, honoring the great matriarch, almost Nefertari, the matriarch of the greatest bloodline in human history. Take the science research the science, and redeem yourself, your family, and your community and nation. As the great Marcus Garvey said, it's about African redemption. We must redeem ourselves. He also spoke about self-reliance. Self-reliance. Rely on self. Don't rely on shit else. Don't beg. Don't ask. If it's yours, you take it. This is the general Sarah Sue said he said, hey, arm yourself with knowledge, bang on that wicked ass beast daily, liberation through African education and confrontation. Black power.